principal of the Mount Pleasant Football Academy, Vanny Clark. Mr. Clark noted that like all other educational institutions, Mount Pleasant has had its fair share of suffering due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Academy has been suffering from the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, as do all other educational institutions in Jamaica. However, I feel that the systems that we had in place would have prepared us well for the challenges that we encountered. Um, at the start of this pandemic, when the government announced that all schools were to be closed, we would have closed on the 13th of March as other schools, but we were able to immediately get online on the following Monday to ensure that the students were having their educational offerings as per normal. However, it was being done online. When asked about the preparedness of the students who would, f for the first time, be sitting any form of regional exams, namely the CSEC, Mr. Clark enthusiastically expressed confidence that they were prepared for the exams, even though part of the syllabus had not been covered. We have now, for the first time, our first batch of students sitting the external exams, those being CSEC and NCT VET exams. Um, we would have been very, very enthusiastic about getting them involved in this milestone, as it were. Um, we feel that they were well prepared. Of course, given that none of these kids doing these exams would have been able to complete the grade 11 component of the syllabus, uh, as in, you know, doing that all the way through to grade 11. We have no students in grade 11 as yet. So all of them would have been on a fast track timeline in order to be able to complete the exams. And of course, COVID would have impacted that somewhat, but we are not unique in that regard. But perhaps what is best typify how we went about things is the fact that we, we are able to get grade eight students sitting these exams. And so we are very excited about that. We feel that they will do extremely well. The boys were very, very positive when they came out of their final exams and we feel that the preparation that the teachers put in the effort that they made will serve the kids well and we hope to see some very good results once the results are announced. Mount Pleasant, like many other internationally recognized educational institutions, boasts a very diverse culture in the admission of foreign students. Mr. Clark positioned that there wasn't much difficulty in dealing with these foreign students as the institution itself had mechanisms in place to facilitate them. It wasn't, it was perhaps the same amount of challenge dealing with our international students as it was in dealing with our national, our local students, because the reality is that we were transitioning from a face-to-face -face academic interaction to an online interaction, and so the kids would have had some practice in that before the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. As I said before, we were very prepared to deal with the with some of the challenges posed. No one could have foreseen, you know, foreseen the exact entirety of what COVID would unleash on us. But we were very prepared in terms of the structures that we had here in place at Mount Pleasant, and so the transition from a face-to-face -face interaction to an online interaction was a seamless one for us and the same would have applied to our international students. The teachers would have kept in touch. I myself would have been in touch with some of these students and you know just to ensure that they are not only from an academic perspective but from a psychosocial perspective are handling the, the impacts of the COVID-19 on them as a person and on them as a family and you know just not being able to do some of the things that they love seeing their friends you know participating in the football that they really enjoy so much would have had some amount of impact but in terms of their academic offering their academic pursuits the fact that they were not here in school you know did not have a, as great an impact as it could have had were, were we not prepared to handle it but the systems that we had in place, the, the interaction with the teachers, you know, 
having the means to immediately transition to an online sort of setup really helped to ease that transitional period and ensure that the kids you know were able to sprint into it rather than jog into it while assessing the school's approach to COVID, Mr. Clark expresses that the school started to prepare for any possibility weeks in advance. I believe that the management systems that we had in place really would have been, what I would say, very, very good. Um, of course, we encountered a little challenge with connectivity with, you know, some of our students are from deep rural areas and that's not unique to us again, but we did have some challenges there from time to time. But overall, we would have had more than 80% participation across the period of time before school would have officially closed. And so I feel that we, on some days we had 100% participation. You know, so I feel that overall, based on our own assessment, you know, it, it was a successful period as best as success goes in in the new normal that we are existing in. But I'm very proud of what we're able to do. I'm very proud of the effort that the teachers made, the multitude of methodologies that they employed to ensure that they got to the students and were able to interact with the students and remain close to the students was very, very impressive and, and I believe second to none. And of course, the way we went about our business before COVID-19 in terms of allowing our kids to have access to online structures meant that they themselves were able to make that transition a lot easier. Of course, you would have had one or two challenges like most things in life present, but I believe overall, you know, we, we did very, very well. He noted that the academy played an integral part in ensuring that the boys were connected, as even some parents fell on hard times due to jobless and weren't available to provide. They were agile enough to assist. To his amazement, there seemed to be more productivity from some of the boys while at home than when they were on campus. In the first instance, even though we would have met with the students, you know, prepped them, we started preparing for COVID weeks in advance of it actually, of Jamaica actually announcing its first case. So we were well ahead of the curve there. And when it was announced that schools would be closed, we would have already met with the teachers, would have had many consultation sessions with teachers, students. And so the students would have had some amount of opportunity to start rehearsing what they would do, work with the different platforms that they will be able to, that they should be working with once they go home. But of course, you know, you would have had as the weeks went on, we would have had a couple of our students thinking, oh, we are still on holidays, and so the teachers had to spend some time, you know, making individual calls, communicating with the parents. I myself would have been out there communicating with parents, talking to the kids themselves, you know, just to remind them that, listen, even though we are not seeing you physically, we expect that you need to get on and do what you have to do. Uh, you know, and so throughout the entire process, we were agile enough to to meet the different challenges that the kids encountered, that the parents encountered. So when times turned up where parents didn't have money to deal with um, things like internet provisions, you know, we, we were agile enough to adapt to that and to change how we go about our overall interactions. And so throughout the entire process, in fact, I will tell you, that we had participation from some boys more than and easier than when they were here. When they were here, we would we actually had to be going behind them. Listen, you need to be you need to be doing your work. You need to be doing this. You know, we had to be constantly dialoguing with them. And we found that some of these kids, once they got home, and we started the, the online learning fully, that the, the level of enthusiasm that they showed and the commitment that they showed to it, I, I was absolutely stunned by some of it because we honestly thought that some of these kids, we would have had significant challenges with them and I was very, very proud of them. I had to actually call up a couple of them to say well done because you know they were perhaps among those who we thought we would have had challenges and of course there were some who did not have 
broadband internet at home and had to go use community centers and things like that. And the effort that they made to do that really, really speaks volume to the level of maturity that our boys have shown throughout this period. And I'm very, very proud of them. I'm very, very proud of my teachers and the effort that they themselves would have made. An optimistic principal, Vanny Clark, of the Mount Pleasant Football Academy, said that there were plans on the horizon to construct a new campus that would be available to facilitate more students. He revealed that they were actively searching for a suitable space to commence operations. What we have in mind is really to build a second campus so that we are able to take in more students. Uh, Mount Pleasant, where we currently are, domicile is a wonderful and beautiful site however it's a difficult site to construct and the terrain is very very difficult to construct on. and so what we're looking for is being able to identify a terrain more suited mm -hmm. to the sort of construction that we have in mind you know getting in the additional play fields that sort of thing so our second campus will really be an extension campus. Um, we would love for it to be domiciled here in St. Anne as well. And we are actively searching for lands and we hope to have that tied up in very short order. Where are we in terms of, as you said, that um, campus? I remember a few uh, years ago when we, when we started. Where, where are we now in terms of, um, in terms of, of the stands and all of that, are we on track for that coming? Alright, so when we started initially, we would have alluded to different phases of our construction, different phases of our growth, and we are still on track for that. Um, we strongly believe that we will have everything that we wanted done to this present site done completed in in very short order um, we are due now to start construction on our pavilion and change rooms um, we are just waiting on one or two i's and t's to be dotted and crossed so that we can complete we can begin that process but that is very very close we expect that to happen within another few weeks at the very at the most and so that process is well underway but whilst we are working to complete that process, we still be Mount Pleasant and very aggressive with our growth agenda. We still want to start now moving towards the future. And so our future is here with us presently and it's, and it's moving. You know, so having that second campus is the next stage. And of course, the other things that we would have announced in that press release are a very significant part of that overall puzzle. Mr. Clark, in alluding to the procurement of a new coach, pointed out that he would help to bridge the gap between local and international exposure. All right, so in the general Jamaican context, we tend to think of a coach, you know, just getting out there, you know, having a kick about, you know, giving instructions, you know, asking players to, to be tactically aware, to be technically gifted, etc. But for us, we understand that there is more value to a coach. And what we are looking to do right now is to find someone who brings a body of experience that will allow us to transition the space between local exposure and international expertise. So that's really where we are. So bringing in this coach now will allow us to have some sort of bridging of that divide. And he will not only be on the field of play, but assisting us in significant ways in building this wonderful future that we that we are speaking of in expressing his expectation of continued success voices conviction by saying success is not measured by trophies rather the development and maintenance of love and passion for the sport well, 
what we expect is, is continued success and we measure success not by trophies but by growth, you know, the love and passion that the kids have for the game and maintain for the game because that's very significant and every time I do an interview I always say that so long as the kids are enjoying the game then for me that's a victory and so there will nothing will be changed in that we, we continue to have a model where we build from the grassroots up and where we expect that our youngest kids will focus on having fun and as they get older through the age groups then they will transition into becoming professionals and whilst they will still have that fun element but they would have learned across the years being with us what how to have that blend of enjoying entertaining and being a professional and understanding that this football business is a, a job for them and so every single day they are professionals and they are able to deliver a high level of con consistency and a high level of quality every single day that they take the field so bringing in these coaches will just present them with an opportunity to see not just what we do here in Jamaica and how we want it to be but help us fast track that learning curve for them because of course as I said before it's not only about what the coach does out there on the pitch but also the conversations that the coach is able to have off the pitch the, the experiences that the coach will be able to share with the kids off the pitch you know these are very very important these are significant things that will aid them in growing faster and in matriculating into better professionals as we go along. In a riveting conclusion of a look into the future and what could be expected from Mount Pleasant Football Academy, Principal Clark coins the term that is the mandate of the club to become the biggest football entity and not only be Jamaica's champion, but a conqueror of CONCA, CAF. Well, we already have had a number of our kids from here representing the country, and we're very proud of that. Um, we've had kids now at the under-15 level. We've had them representing at the under-17 level. We're very proud of that, and we want to continue that. Uh, we managed to do that in relatively short time. And But, of course, the big one is having a graduate of the academy representing at the senior level. And so our target is really to have our kids move on from the academy, transitioning into our senior team and transitioning from senior team to international uh, you know, players. We talk about now our mandate, what we're looking at is 2026. And this is something big for us. What we are doing and what we are thinking of is really to start preparation for World Cup 2026 North America. And what that is, what that represents, is a real promise to Jamaica that we are going to do everything in our power to ensure that the kids we have under our charge will be given all the opportunities to be de to develop and be exposed so that they have the level of competency and the level of maturity that we will see some of our kids our graduates in that national squad come 2026 finally in terms of being the head of, of this academy you have been to the last assignment was um, in 2019. It's the first time Jamaica is reaching a quarter final stage. So how does this make you feel as the head of the academy? As, as the head of the academy, I'm, I'm very pleased. I, um, I am aware that there is much work to be done. And so whilst I am happy with what we have done so far, I am not satisfied that we are where we should be or where we want to be. And so I am always looking at the next big thing. I'm always looking at what else we need to do, where we need to go, 
because my passion, my drive is to grow Mount Pleasant into the biggest football entity in the Western Hemisphere. That is what we want to do. That is where we want to go. We want to be able to say in a few years' time that Mount Pleasant is not, not only Jamaica's national champion, but Mount Pleasant is CONCACAF champion. And hopefully, who knows, you know, someday we'll be able to say Mount Pleasant Football Academy is club world cup champion and that would be something amazing something perhaps not many jamaicans would have given thought to but we believe that we can do that we believe that we can put the structures in place we believe that we can build a product so strong so powerful that we'll be able to realize these things we show this thank you